the end of the day. But uh, anyway, we've always been there in June. We've never been there in the, in the winter months. Hey, Hi, everybody. I was joined by KM6WMV and KM6WMW to talk about Field Day 2020 and how it was different than other field days that we'd experienced in the past. So, with no further ado, let's slip in and talk to Tiffany and Rosalind. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to subscribe. And if you like this video, click like as well. Hi, Tiffany. Hi, Rosalind. How are you today? Hi, Stu. Uh, we're great. I'm, yeah. great. I'm great. Hi, Stu. How are you? So, Rosalind is uh, Kilo Mike 6, Whiskey Mike uh, Victor and Tiffany is Kilo Mike Six Whiskey Mike Whiskey, uh, and they did participate in this last field day for 2020, and they uh, volunteered actually to come and talk to me today uh, a little bit about their experience since things were so different here in our community, and uh, that they uh, they took part in the contest, which was amazing. So uh, you know, first off, I I, I probably can don't need to ask more than one of you how long you've had your licenses since you have sequential call signs. <laughs> Go ahead. October of 2018. So. Okay, so we're coming up on two years, right? Coming up on two years, that's right. There you right. go. There you go. And um, Rosalind, what class of license do you currently hold? Um, I'm a technician. And Tiffany? I'm general. All right, very cool. And was this, this your first field day? This was not my first field day. I was lucky enough to be able to participate in 2019 field day um, with um, two organizations, in fact. So it was very interesting. Um, uh, and uh, this was the second one where we kind of flew on our own. Uh, well, I'll take that back. Not flew on our own. We're, we were very much participating with um, Zoom meetings and had a lot of support through the club, uh, definitely, but just physically, uh, <laughs> physically alone. Physically yeah. alone, okay. Yeah. I, I, virtually together, physically alone. Virtually because, together, uh, yeah. <laughs> right, right, virtually together. Of course, yeah. you and Rosalind, you, you're in the same household, so you were able to participate together as uh, kind of a team, or did you participate separately? <laughs> well, <laughs> well I, let me define that question a little better. <laughs> were you guys under the same call sign or were you using your own call signs? Okay, I believe I used my own call sign. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yes, because we had two radios. And oh, all right. Mm -hmm. All right, very cool, very <laughs> cool. Um, and uh, all right, so it wasn't your first field day, that, and we, we kind of covered that it was extremely different this year. Um, so how did it go this year? Did it meet your expectations as to what you thought it was going to be? Or, you know, for you guys, what was your personal take from this year? Uh, whoever wants to start. I thought it went really well. I was pleasantly surprised. I was a little apprehensive at first how is this going to go are we going to know uh we're again i felt like we were flying solo but we weren't we had so much support uh from our members you know fellow members uh through zoom and you know other forms of communication so it was like we were all together and um it was great it was a lot of fun doing zoom virtually you know you could go uh on any on Zoom and see your fellow um, ham r radio uh, operators, you know, hear them on the radio or on Zoom. So it was great. It was a lot of fun. It was definitely different. Um, some aspects of it, you know, I sure we we look forward to you know, just togetherness and participation and being next to your fellow ham operators. 
but you know, next year we'll have that. So, well, but it, it was, was great. It was, it great. was extremely different. And you mentioned the Zoom meetings, and uh, you know, for those of the out there that don't know um the ventura county ham radio clubs all got together we shared one big zoom meeting uh that lasted 26 hours it lasted the entire event uh even though uh you know you might have tuned in and saw us all sleeping at three o'clock in the morning it was on and running for that entire time as well as having a um uh, radio net that operated on the uh, uh, countywide repeater system uh, for people who had questions or needed support or mentoring Elmering, it was all there for them, uh, as well as the lead up to it. Um, Rosalind, did you take advantage of any of that, any of the mentoring or anything like that during or uh, in the upcoming to it? Well, before, no, but um, once I, uh, once we started setting up radio, uh, then I was able to go on the Zooms and watch some of that. So that was helpful. Um, the videos, the YouTube videos were very helpful. Um, and knowing that we could ask questions uh, through Zoom was really, it was completely necessary. Um, and the third thing that I used that made a big difference um, probably the most uh, basic thing was that the manual that went with the radio that I used um, helped navigate through a lot of what I didn't know. Um, so I still need to read the whole manual that goes with the radio, but had I not done that, um, I may have gone through the whole contest not knowing. Um, so with the Zoom and with the YouTube from the ones you did, and um, and the manual, we're able to um, glue it together. Fantastic, so fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and if I may add to that also, you did uh, watch um, our field day Zoom meeting with, uh, we had a you know pre-field day Zoom meeting. And while I don't think you were on screen, you were definitely here there. taking yeah. notes and mm -hmm. things like that. So that was very helpful. Yeah, you know, it was funny. Most of the questions we got weren't really necessarily technical questions. They were more operational questions, or I, I think uh, a lot of it was rule-based questions. We got a lot of questions regarding mm -hmm. rules and classes and mm -hmm. categories and trying to figure out um, something that we pulled out of it at the time was my gosh, you know, this is just something that magically happened in the background, you know, mm -hmm. at other field days, because we'd have all these amateurs coming to a specific mm -hmm. location, operating for an hour or two, you know, the new ones, and then kind of going and socializing and then going home. And, you know, that was it. That was their experience for field mm -hmm. day. This mm -hmm. one, I think, was a lot more hands-on for everybody. I Absolutely. believe that's true. Yes. Absolutely. I think I learned a lot. I, I learned a lot too. Yeah. Each scenario is different. Like, you know, you're speaking of what I, I had heard a lot of questions and I questioned myself, what class am I? You know, I have a, I have, I'm on a handheld, uh, I'm battery power. I just use the one battery for the whole duration. And so, uh, you know, but I, just to make sure, because we don't want to, <laughs> we want to, you know, it's really, it really, we don't break it's FCC funny rules, you should say you know? that, because, you know, that's something that I've always found amazing with the contesting in amateur radio, is there is an effort by, I'm not going to say all amateurs, but I think the majority of amateurs for fair play in the contest. I mean, doing mm -hmm. the right thing, making mm -hmm. sure that, you know, all right, it, you know, is this really, am I, am I allowed to run this category or this class? Uh, you know, how much power am I allowed to run? I was talking to an amateur radio operator that uh, accidentally, this is the gosh honest truth, he got halfway through field day thinking that low power was 200 watts not mm. 150 and he ran at 200 for half a field day and at that point he said no i was high power it wasn't like well it was just a mistake and i'm gonna you know 
what's an extra 50 watts? He actually, you know, nope, I'm going to turn my scoring on high power, you know, even though I didn't run 1500 watts, you know, I ran mm -hmm. that extra 50 watts and I was, I was impressed. I really yeah. was, you know. Oh, yes. Yeah. We try so, to follow the rules oh, as yeah. much as possible. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the important thing to remember, okay, is field day is not a contest. And I swear to gosh, if I hear that one more time, mm -hmm. I'm going to explode, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's see, yeah. Uh, what is it, Stu? What is field day? Field day is actually a emergency operational deployment exercise. Exercise, okay. Okay. Yeah. This yeah. is where we all get out. We use our radios to do what we do. Uh, which is communicate, mm -hmm. you know, and you guys took a big part in it this year. If I could ask, uh, where'd you guys end up score wise? I, oh, well, I'll, I'll <laughs> tell you. Okay. So <clears throat> I, I had, um, I believe it was 150 points. Um, and that's because you know, I'll tell you, I didn't have many contacts. I, it was about, uh, what, 12, uh, 10, uh, 12 contacts. Sure. So I was on my handheld and, you know, standing out in the backyard and, 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 and that. But uh, I got um, the five-point multiplier. Which right. Was wonderful working on um, uh, low power. Mm -hmm. And then the additional 100 points because... Uh, working just with the one battery, working on emergency power. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. um, if memory serves me correctly, I think it was 150 points. You got 50 points for filing electronically. Oh, oh is that what it? Oh, oh yeah. okay, okay, okay. Great. So without even, I mean, I, I, you know, I did a lot better than I thought I would. Absolutely. Wise, yeah. Well. In the end. So yeah, you did really well. Uh, that's great. And, you. you know, there, there are people out there that do a contest and do one or two contacts. Okay. That's mm -hmm. a lot of times, uh, and you ran two meters, right? That was it. You were on two meters for the whole contest. So, yes, I was. Yes. You know. Uh, yes. and, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's amazing running, uh, running low power, running on a single battery, right. Gave you the five point bonus for low power, uh, on, um, uh, on battery gave you the, um, uh, the, uh, hundred point bonus for running on battery as well. You got 50 points for filing mm -hmm. electronically. So yeah, you did great. You did great. Thank you. I Rosalind, how'd you do? Um, I did. Uh, I did less points because I was on electrical power. Oh, okay. And, and um, let's see. I had twelve contacts, <clears throat> okay. and Tiffany filed for me for electronic filing. Okay. So um, I don't know if that was added. I don't know uh, after that. I just gave uh, Tiffany all my information okay. electronically, all and right. I think she forwarded it. But okay. yeah, we yeah. did. Right, is that what happened? Well, oh. she got the points because right, right. I did it under her call sign. Right, so you, when... you basically you did the application for her, right? Yeah, you submitted right, exactly. the yeah. right. So that's awesome. But remember, it's not a contest. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. Exactly. We were just getting points for our exercise. Exactly, and you know what? Uh, I bet you learned a lot about who you could talk to and how far you could talk, which is a real big winner when you think about it in an emergency, yeah. right? Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. So yeah. there was a lot of benefit there. Uh, so, yes. you know, as compared to previous years, it sounds to me like they had a lot of fun. We did. We had a lot of fun. Absolutely. We did. And we felt, you know, in again, going back i so much appreciate our group and fellow ham uh operators yeah. you know all connecting on zoom it really was a great um you know way to feel you know like we were still all a part of the the same exercise and having that support 
you know, on, on the radio and on Zoom. We had a lot of support from our fellow operators. So that's always appreciated. So fantastic. Is there anything that you'd like to bring up that we haven't talked about? Well, I'll add about, it was uh, really interesting learning the, con the scoring, um, you know, the, the, the scoring uh, options, you know, uh, so that was new for me because last year, last year's field day, you know, was a, a, a ball. It was great, but right. It was all basically done. I came and showed up and, you know, was Made given a microphone and a partner and, yeah. and uh, we went to town, you know, but this time, yeah, it was hands-on with the help again with your YouTube tutorials, uh, you know, step-by-step -step, mm -hmm. uh, instructions on how to access and, um, and download the score, uh, the, the, the contact, uh, scoring software, yeah. The scoring software. Yeah. So that was really interesting. I felt it was really neat learning that. So I feel like for next year's field day, you know, we'll be even that much more prepared and, you know, knowledgeable on the very different aspects of field day that I didn't experience last year. Well, what we're interested in seeing from an organizer standpoint next year is um, are there going to be people that work, you know, come in and do those three or four hours, right, that they would do and then go someplace else or whatever? Are they then going to go home and try to operate on their own and get contacts with each other outside of the, you know, the big setups that they worked at? Because that's mm -hmm. the thing that I think is going to be new about next year is we've got a bunch of people that can do this on their own now. Mm hmm you know, that's right. That that's can, right. They can, that aren't afraid to pick up a HT or plug in a mobile unit or a base unit, you know, and get on and make those contacts. Right. Um, yeah. Also, what we learned in the community, which I thought was really interesting, was the um, um, the fact that uh, people are sitting there running um, VHF there's absolutely no reason that they can't turn around and compete in a contest. We're even trying to get additional local contests going. We're going to have a, some sort of a local contest actually for the picnic in August. That's going to be VHF only, you know? Oh, so, um, and I guess my last question to you is, do you think you're going to, adventure into doing additional VHF or UHF or even for you, uh, Tiffany, HF contest on your own now in the future, now that you know how easy it is to do it. Of course, absolutely. We'll, we'll uh, venture on, you know, with, with each step, you know, there's a, a sense of confidence. You know, you gain a little more confidence uh, every uh, every uh, exercise you do or, you know, this gave us a little, a, a big boost, you know, so I can absolutely see venturing to, uh, you know, uh, VHF or, you know, I, I'm not sure, nothing set in the works at this moment, but sure. absolutely, it's a all definite right. possibility. Rosalind, what did you get out of all this? I just had a lot of fun, truthfully. I, I didn't feel, <laughs> yeah, you know, did. I, was, it, I was more or less uh, scampering at the last minute to find out details that I should have done before because it was all there. Everything was there for us. The, every, like I said, the YouTube, the Zoom, the setups, everything we had, you know. And so basically it was just fun. And um, what I really, I thought was really interesting um, is that when I was really getting to the point where I didn't think I was going to have any more contacts, I was frantically trying to reach as many people as I could. And, um, and then there was one person um, that was on uh, the air that said, anybody who needs a contest, um, come now or something to that effect. And it was uh, probably an experienced um, radio person and that gave us an opportunity to add, to add points um, when we were thinking that, no, we wouldn't be able to get any more points. So that made it even more fun. It was just fun. <laughs> yeah, it is a lot of fun. Yeah. Our, our, you know, fellow 
cam operators who are more experienced do really look out for, you know, I still consider myself, uh, you know, still learning everything, you know, so you all really give us an opportunity to make contacts and really pave the way for us to have all the information that we need and um, uh, the support and make as many contacts as we possibly can. So it's fun and, you know, we can learn as much as possible. One of the most amazing things that I saw is at 11 a.m. on Saturday, there were a bunch of people uh, on VHF that didn't know what to say. They didn't know what to do. They were confused. They were a little apprehensive that somebody was going to yell yeah. at them. Yeah. By about oh, 3.30, 4 o'clock that afternoon, the whole VHF frequency was covered with these experienced operators that were seeing exactly the right thing and were doing it. It was amazing. You know, you, amazing. everyone picked this up. They, they took that first step, that deep breath, right? And said, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try this. You know, oh, please don't yell at me. See you, see you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And you know what? By by, like within within a few hours, short hours, everybody was just right on top of it. And uh, there was an operator that came in and just was a very shy operator. And the next day on Sunday, they actually this new operator just got his license. I guess Friday. Right, <laughs> comes on and is trying yeah. to talk, and this person, like I said, never worked a contest before. Shy operator took this person over to Bozo and talked to them about how to make the contact, like an old pro. <laughs> and it so was neat. the most. Yeah. It was the most amazing thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, so absolutely. Uh, I think that uh, it was a great experience. It was a great experience for me. I had so much fun doing the legwork in front of this to try to help make this happen, you know? So that was really cool. And you talk about the videos. Yeah, I think I put out like 20 videos. No, not that many. But yeah, they were, they were lot, great. They were there were a lot yeah, of videos great. out there. Right. Thank you so they're much. They're so helpful. Yeah. That's Thank you for everything and helping us get on and pulling us through. Basically, without that, we wouldn't have been able to, to do it. And we had a good time. And thank you so much, Stu, and the club, too, for everyone who's helped us. It mm -hmm. was really fun. Well, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. And yeah, I really appreciate that there is no, as, as they say, there's no dumb question. You know, we're not going to get yelled at. We're not going to make make feel like oh you should have known that or something like that no this is if you don't know you, there are videos there are you know ask ask your fellow operators you know it's it's a great community overall and uh yeah your videos were great really if, if we had questions just go to the go to Stu's YouTube page and it's uh more likely than not there's a video on it so yeah. <laughs> well, fantastic, guys. Well, hey, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. This was fun. That was a lot of fun. Um, Tiffany and Rosalind really came across well in the interview, and I think that they had a lot of fun doing it as well. I hope so, at least. Anyway, hey, don't forget to subscribe and Click the like button if you enjoyed this. And if you have any comments or questions, go ahead and place those down in the comments section below. Thanks again for watching. This is AG6AG, Stu, wishing you 73, and hope to hear you out there on the air.